How's it going, fellow traders? It's Magic Trader here, and it's uh, the Tuesday, March 27th, and it's around 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, first of all, I want to thank all the new subscribers. Um, really appreciate the support that you've all been given to me over the last couple of weeks, and uh, especially appreciate the support from the uh, new subscribers. So I'll be doing my best to continue with the um, the analysis and the amount of information that I've been providing. Uh, I'll be looking to be actually uh, uh, pumping up some of the, uh, the the content so that you can get a little bit more in-depth information from me and uh, hopefully help you in your trading. So this will be the last um outlook forex outlook video that i'll be posting on my public twitter feed from now on uh, future videos will be only for subscribers so i'm going to be going through the markets that i trade today because we had some decent moves yesterday and um, these decent moves were as i mentioned on twitter completely um fear-based I mean, you know, leading up to the end of last week, we could see in the news that there was a lot of talk about this trade war. Um, and, you know, this got traders really interested in selling the U.S. dollar and buying gold and, and buying the euro and such. So with all this uh, scared money, a lot of people came into the markets, made their moves last week. The institutions allowed them to make their moves. And then over the weekend, they bombarded everybody with, with even more news. And then we saw how everybody was getting into the markets yesterday, right? And and Mondays, do we normally see that much action in the markets? Not really, right? We, we hardly ever see that much action in the markets on a Monday. And what happened in the markets on, on Monday was just crazy. The euro was going straight to the moon and, and, and the pound. And we saw gold climbing up really high as well so and US dollar was dropping but I mentioned on Twitter I said everybody hold up don't get so excited in fact over the weekend on my uh, caught report analysis video I was saying that um, what I am personally going to do is to to wait for all the emotion to play out uh, during this week and then wait for the institutions to show their hands and then once the institutions show their hands, then I will, uh, then I'll have a better indication of what the institutions are doing. So, so yesterday was that move from the from the retail traders. And so now I want to go through all the markets since we got those big moves, and I want to see if we can find where the institutions are uh, showing us their cards. All right. So the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at gold and we're going to take a look at what we saw happen with gold recently. A big push upwards and now we're testing that descending trend line right over here. And we're also testing that daily area of supply. So from here, it's, um, it's a very good chance that we see more lows on gold, especially with you know the fact that we're waiting for the euro to drop and the US dollar to climb even higher um, but there's a chance that we can just be they could just hold price in these areas okay weekly bullish and golf which is pretty strong support and we also got that weekly 20 EMA so price could just hold in these areas and then make a move to the upside that's a possibility that's why I'm not trading gold right now because gold does want to go higher it does I'd appreciate it if it would get down here because there's an excellent area to buy down here, but I am not going to uh, hold my breath on that move to the downside as of yet. I'm just going to be watching and seeing what the institutions are doing and, uh, and wait for them to make a move. Now, if these highs get taken out, I'd be interested in going long because that tells me the institutions have removed a key area of supply that they were the ones uh, that created it. So if they remove an area that they created, then I know they have something else in play. So 
waiting for that to happen, either a move lower or taking this out and then I'll be interested in going long on gold. As for oil, I mentioned uh, last week that there might be a institutional trade signal to go long and there is now an institutional trade signal to go long. I'll be sharing that on the private Twitter feed for, for subscribers and um, yeah just waiting for this uh, to, to play out um, and uh, and then we'll have a nice trade to, to get in long. So right now we got the this weekly area of supply in control but I'm not too concerned about this area being in control because market dynamics tell me that in situations like this a lot more often than not this institutional trade signal that I have spotted on the charts will have a high degree of probability of playing out usually between 90 and 95 percent so for me that's a great percentage I'm looking for 90 to 95 percent that's what I like to get into and that's what I like to sit back and put my hands behind my head and just and watch and just watch the the movie play out okay so waiting on that for oil not quite set up just yet so we'll be waiting for that one to to set up so on the US dollar we got this move down to these lows right weekly area of demand and control expecting price to to come up we got that trend line there that's gonna cause a little bit of a, a roadblock so we're gonna expect some choppiness but eventually I believe we're gonna get a break to the upside on that so I'm not taking any trades on on the US dollar I'm just watching this one right now and uh, expecting that move uh, to the upside alrighty Aussie US dollar breaking lower look at that so last week I told you this was an institutional trade signal to go long but I told you I wasn't taking it because the type of trades that I like to get into are ones that I get in and they go with the institutional money. The institutions are going long, they're piling in long, they're they're buying the Aussie, that's when I like to get in. I told you it was an institutional trade signal because I knew that this was an area where the institutionals had buy orders. And every time there's a buy order there or buy orders, price will move up. So this was good for some day traders. And some day traders wrote me and they took advantage of this move to the upside, which is great. And uh, but I said that you know when we got up here I said if you're long take profits because I don't see this going much higher and and many of you did at least you you sent me messages telling me that you did and you made profits and that's a decent run right uh, 46 pips depending on what your position size was 46 pips is not is not bad when you're a day trader that's you'll take that any day right so that one worked out quite nicely for you guys and uh, so right now we're expecting this to break and this to move lower down here next target is to do let's see uh, I'm expecting it to move down to the 76s so a move down to the 76s and then this one's gonna be uh, prime for opening up long positions so uh, that's in the process uh, of playing out right now and you know when I see a chart like this 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 to me is great because it tells me that uh, the flow of the rest of the markets are going to follow suit okay the institutions always trade certain pairs at key times right now we see a lot of movement with the Aussie yen Kiwi but not so much euro and pound but because the institutions are f they're forcing price in a specific direction with this other, these other uh, key currencies that gives me the indication that the other ones are going to follow suit so now that's just what I'm waiting for I'm waiting for them to uh, uh, to make those those moves and I'm waiting for the euro and the pound to to follow and that's gonna take some time but uh, it will eventually start making its moves so waiting for this one to get a little bit lower with the Aussie CAD I didn't want to go long 
and you can see why you see that drop there's that drop that I was expecting uh, I eventually see this one going a lot higher uh, I got in positions here to go long and I got out here and up here perfect timing right because take a look at the big drop that we're getting now that's why I got out of my positions because I was I was expecting this by looking at the US dollar and the other uh, other currency pairs you know it just made complete sense that we were going to get a big drop now I'm waiting to get in long again but I'm not going to be even thinking about going long the Aussie CAD until I start seeing that the institutions are starting to to buy the Aussie okay and when I see them do that then I'll be interested in getting into this one but this one I predict is gonna go a lot higher and I know a lot, a lot of people in the trading world don't like to use the word predict but um, I guess I should say expect I guess that's the um, the term that people like to use It's the politically correct term but whatever the case may be this one's gonna be a big mover to the upside in my opinion because I'm expecting Aussie to get extremely strong and I'm also expecting the CAD to get uh, a lot weaker so that together is going to be a perfect recipe for a really strong move to the upside but right now I gotta respect that the monthly trend line is in control a monthly tested area is in control so I gotta wait for it to finish its drop wait for Aussie to build up strength and then, uh, and then the, this chart will present itself with with an institutional trade signal. It will, and when that happens, I'll be right there waiting to to get in long. Okay, Aussie N. So I'm interested in getting into long positions down here. So expecting a bigger drop. We got this imbalance and control now. So expecting a bigger drop down to the 79.28s. And when it gets even lower, hopefully it gets even lower. If not, I'll be waiting for institutional trade signals to go long. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm waiting for it to get lower. And then eventually, it'll make for some, uh, for some good long positions. Because at the end of the day, I'm expecting Aussie to get a lot stronger. And I'm also expecting the Yen to get a lot weaker. So that'll make a really good long position on this chart. But I just got to be patient and wait for that to play out. Aussie Kiwi. Uh, my targets have been hit. Oops, what did I do here? Boom. Let's get back on track. There. First target hit. Second target hit. Now it's going towards my 104.87 target. So uh, this one, I think, has a good chance of being a good long. But. But. Because of the Kiwi and the chart on the Kiwi and the data on the Kiwi is not very clear. I mean, if you look at the Kiwi data, the Kiwi's been like a just a disaster for weeks. It hasn't really told a very clear story. The only thing we can see here is, you know, both longs and shorts are aggressive. Well, thank you very much. That doesn't really tell us much, right? And if you take a look here, neutral. The indicator on the charts on my... Uh, on the cells is blue neutral don't take any trades so there's not a strong sentiment either up or down on this pair so taking any trades that involve the Kiwi or any currency pairs that involve the Kiwi is a gamble all right you know if I look at this chart I think there's a great chance that this is going to have a momentum shift and then a move to the upside like this based on technicals based on market dynamics and based on the fact that I'm uh, I'm expecting the Aussie to get strong alright so this could eventually be a great trade to the upside but I'm going to wait for there to be proof before I open up any trades on this and, and put my money into the market on, on this currency pair okay CAD yen so what do we got here a little bit of mixed emotions here so price is just sitting I'd like to get in long open up long positions down here but we still got a little bit longer to go 
And if it decides it wants to make a move, uh, it's probably going to be, yeah, lower. I'm expecting weaker CAD, right? But Yen's also going to be weaker, so that's going to be a lot of consolidation. So this is not going to be good for any trades. So because of that, I won't even waste my time and look to take any trades on this one. I'm just going to move on to the next one. So Euro, what do we have here with the Euro? So this one's been interesting, right? We had that very bullish move to the upside. Now we're testing this area, this daily area of supply and we have a new area formed of demand. It's not the greatest area of demand, but it is still an area of institutional demand. So once price gets down, there's gonna be some choppiness here. At the end of the day, we have a monthly area of supply and control. We have a three month trend line that's in confluence with that area of supply. We have a lot of this type of action on the weekly chart. And I believe on the latest video that I posted with the CFTC analysis, I was I was making mention of something that I noticed on Friday regarded, regarding the Euro US dollar. When examining the caught data, examining the long positions and short positions, and something just dawned on me. And I realized, you know, what dawned on me could be really, really huge. So I spent a couple days just meditating on it and talking it out with my wife and uh, and boring her to death with, with what I uh, came to realize but and, and with all honesty she actually finds it very interesting uh, she's been following me along all the, all the years of my trading and has followed me on my journey so everything new that I discover I always share it with her so um, yeah and she was telling me yeah that makes complete sense what you what you discovered so you know I'm not gonna jump to conclusions and think that what I discovered is what it is I'm going to have to test it out and go through all the currency pairs and go through all the data and and see if whether or not I see the same thing happening on all the other currency pairs but I believe what I found is very strong and I'll once I gather enough data on it and I know that this is hardcore and uh, based in uh, on in, in real facts then I'll I'll share what I found with with subscribers in the future because it's gonna be a game changer I truly think it's gonna be a game changer so profit taking up here but a lot of people asking me you know the caught reports you see them reducing short positions if they're reducing short positions why would you think price is gonna drop wouldn't they be adding short positions if price was gonna drop you know in some circumstances they do and in some circumstances they don't and those circumstances all depend on many different scenarios so that's what I'm gonna be testing out to see what uh, circumstances those are but what I discovered on Friday let me tell you man it makes complete and absolute sense and another thing is you know one day when I put this all together and I share it with uh, the subscribers uh, you know you're gonna realize just how brilliant just how brilliant this whole market is and how they've set up this market for them to uh, to profit and how they manipulate price and and get price to do what they needed to do so that they can um, they can profit and move price where they wanted to. It's it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So anyways, I'll get into that in the future. But right now, I just wanted to mention it to you. Um, expecting a, a move lower still here. I got some uh, uh, short positions open. And I'm looking to profit once we get these areas taken out. This one shouldn't be much of a problem. In fact that shouldn't be like that da, 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 da. this should be like let me just see here yeah that yeah okay so just waiting for those areas to get taken out and then my profit targets will get hit euro aussie big move to the upside 
uh, Aussie's a lot weaker than what we see the Euro being, so we're getting that move. Let's take a look here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, we got the tip of that supply. All right. So on the four hour, there was an institutional trade signal to go long here. Look how beautiful that's working. But I didn't take it again because I'm not interested in taking any euro long until euro uh, gets support and I see proof that the institutions are buying the euro again. So until I see that, I'm not going to be interested. But take a look at this sucker. Whew. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is a trade this is an institutional trade signal and I'm doing tests on it right now to um, make this a very, very strong signal. I need to know under what circumstances and situations these will play uh, on and I wanted to take this one but I said no, you know what, I need to gather more uh, more data on this type of trade signal but take a look at that sucker. Stop loss here, entry here, it was all upside. Look at that. Bulletproof target would have been here. Whew, look at this move. Crazy. This is going to be a very, very powerful trade signal to use in the future. And there is a trade signal down here too on the daily. Institutional trade signal right here. Look at that. No drawdown. And zoop. perfect analysis. Bulletproof target hit. Daily weekly target hit. And what's my next target up there? 167.93. Yeah. Just a matter of time until that comes and gets hit. Wonderful. Beautiful. Euro CAD. So we got weekly area supply and control. So I'm not interested in getting in long yet. Uh, possibly some long positions off of here once the euro gets support from the institutions but right now I'm not trading this pair so euro pound is mess it's been a mess for a long time I'm not trading it euro yen um, so this one uh, not interested in taking longs this is going to be interesting because I'm expecting euro to get weak yeah, yen can get weak any minute now. So both weak means consolidation. So it's not a, it's not a good pair to trade. Not at this time, at least. So going to skip that one. Euro kiwi again. Kiwi's involved here, right? So here is a trade signal, but I didn't take it because I'm waiting for uh, proof that the institutions are buying the euro. That isn't uh, that isn't present yet, so not taking any trades on this chart just yet. Pound U.S. dollar. Here we go again with just like the euro. We got this push to the upside, straight into an area of supply where the institutions have sell orders, and right at a weekly area of supply. This is actually an institutional trade signal to go short. But I didn't take it because I'm already situated short with a theme trade. So, so we got a big drop on the four hour chart from this area. Actually, it fell short within by fell short of hitting a four hour zone nested in that area in that daily zone. Got a big drop into an area that's already been tested. After the big drop, usually traders come in and buy for the reversal but now you can see we're hitting the underside of this trend line and I expect this to eventually break apart this area isn't even a high quality area of demand so the fact that we're getting reactions from here tells me that you know there's nothing really holding price up here except for retail buying so I'm expecting this to break and um, then you know, once that happens, we'll have some nice, uh, we'll have a nice institutional trade signal, and this could potentially be a good shorting opportunity. Uh, only thing is that 
with this daily trend line in the way. I'd prefer for this trend line to be out of the way first and then it would be nice to take some shorts, profit here, and then more targets to the downside. So still waiting for this to play out and let's just change the color of that. It's supposed to be like this. Thank you. And yeah, so just waiting on this one. Pound Aussie, boom, look at that move to the upside. Whew. All because of the Aussie weakness. But we're going and we're hitting into areas of resistance because we had previous areas here. Previous area of demand, we're coming straight into that and pushing deeper right into it. Demand uh, now supply, this is not supposed to be here supposed to be on the weekly chart. There you go. Okay. Institutional trade signal to go long was here. Look at that. No drawdown. All upside. So, waiting for... Um, yeah, I was actually looking for another trade off of here, but never got that drop, which is fine. Just waiting for institutional trade signals to present themselves as good and clear as this one here. Pound CAD, we're rallying up into a, a four hour supply area. So um, we're, we're stuck within a weekly area of supply, so it's not a good idea to go long at this point. We could see some shorts. We could see this happen for uh, day traders, but for me, I am waiting for uh, a move lower or break this area of supply to go long, but no, no, not no longs. We got a monthly area of supply and control, so eventually this is going to break down. So, weaker pound, stronger CAD, you know. For the fact that I don't think we're going to get much of a strong CAD except for maybe a drop down here before up. It would need a lot more weaker pound for this to play out. And it's going to have to because monthly area of supply is in control. So we got to get a move to the downside. Pound yen. What do we see here? So this one's not the clearest chart. I'm not very much interested in taking any trades off this one. We have an imbalance here in control. That's why we got that big drop here. But in terms of institutional trade signals or high probability trade setups, nothing really. So I pass it. Pound Kiwi, institutional trade signal to go long was here. Again, I passed on it because Pound was not showing me that institutions were interested in going long. So not interested in going long because any longs are short-lived. I mean, day traders could have made money, you know, up there or even held it longer. Day traders can make good money on trades like this, but I'm looking to get in long and have it stress-free and be able to target big targets, big rewards. So waiting for that to be clearer. And so, uh, US dollar, Japanese yen, I haven't been triggered on my long just yet. I think it came within like a pip of hitting my order and then it moved. So still waiting for it to make a move lower, which I'm expecting. And then eventually momentum shift to the upside. And then eventually this will be, this will present some nice institutional trade signals to go long. And then uh, make some money as this sucker rides to the upside like that. Okay, so let's go on to the US CAD. So we're in like a wedge formation, right? But eventually, I believe price will break to the upside. So we could get a move down here like this and then break out. That could possibly happen. But I'm not taking any trades on this just yet because there's nothing of high probability. Kiwi, again, messy chart, data is not clear, so taking trades on this would be uh, tricky. But US Swiss franc, 
So U.S. Swiss franc, I was mentioning weekly area of supply came into con control and then we saw this push to the downside here. But I do believe that you know the momentum starting is going to start to shift back up to the upside and we're going to get a bigger move to the upside. That is what I see is in the works here. So I'm not taking any trades on this as well. All right, guys. So that is the Forex Market Outlook video for you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you will use it to make good trading decisions uh, this week. A lot of patience is going to be required, but the patience will be paid off after everything sets up properly because then there's going to be some really big moves coming into the market. You know, Remember, the institutions take their time. They're not rushing. They're moving in and out of their positions very slowly. We just got to follow the COT report, see what they're doing, and make sure we're doing exactly what, what they're doing. And, and if we can do that, then we're going to benefit from it. All right? And then we can make trading very stress-free. I think the eventual goal in trading is to be able to sit back, do some analysis, wait, wait for things to clearly be present, and when they are, pull the trigger, put in some orders, and go about your, your life living, right? And not be stressed out. Oh, is it going to make money? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Oh, now it's in a big drawdown. Oh, I can't take this drawdown anymore. This is killing me. Maybe I should just get out now. No, that's not proper. You can't live a life with that type of uh, trading going on. So it's got to be calculated, cool, patient, wait. Everything sets up. Because after everything waits, everything after you wait and everything sets up properly, when you get into a trade, you feel you feel good about yourself. You feel confident because you did everything you were supposed to do before going into that trade. And if the trade doesn't work out, no big deal. There was something wrong with the analysis, and it happens. Nobody's perfect. You can't be perfect all the time. But when the trade does work out, like those ones that I, I showed you on this video, it's a wonderful thing, right? It's, it's just it's a wonderful thing to to get in here and have your stop loss here and no drawdown and price never be, even comes back to your entry point not once you look you open you wake up in the morning and you look at your phone and all your positions are positive it's a great feeling you know you go down you you're feeling all chipper you make yourself a coffee you go into your kitchen make some bacon and eggs looking at your phone which is positive numbers in there and as the days go by those positive numbers just grow and grow and grow and grow that is the way to trade okay so anyways again welcome all new subscribers thank you for the support um, we're I'm really looking forward to to uh, teaching you guys what I've learned about trading uh, supply and demand, using the COT reports, analyzing them to figure out what the institutions are doing, uh, teaching you about psychology, what I've done personally in my trading to make me a more patient trader. And if you guys want more information about how to subscribe, you can go to my website, www.whiteoakfx, W-H-I-T-E, oakfx.com just click on membership and you can read all about it there all right guys until next time i hope you guys are safe this week and uh trade well take it easy